Hey everyone, today I'm super excited to talk to you about hoverboards and how you can use them in your robotics projects. You know hoverboards, these, uh, these toys that kids and teenagers are riding all over the neighborhoods. They've got two very powerful wheels, a great battery, and uh, fortunately for us, they have a control board that is hackable that we can rewrite the firmware without too much difficulty and get them to respond to uh, two devices and commands that we want, like a joystick or a serial commands from an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, something like that. And I'm just so excited because for medium to large size robots, they are super powerful. They eliminate the need for gearboxes, uh, making a more complicated drivetrain. So this is going to be a several part video series. The first one, we want to talk to you about the hardware of the hoverboard a little bit and where you can get more information. To be clear, I didn't invent or develop any of this. I just spent a lot of time digging and trying things that didn't work. I was just finally able to find this set of resources, I think, that are the proper ones. And I wanted to share them with you in one place. So there will be links in the descriptions. I'll be talking about them and showing you some of the websites. But I'll give you a little bit of an overview. You can go to those for even more details, even more information and options. So yeah, the first part of the video series is going to be about um, the hardware and general overview. And the next video is going to be about flashing the firmware kind of generally without too many specifics for the different, uh, for the different specific applications. And then the next two parts is going to be where we split. And one tutorial, I'm going to make sure you know how to use the hoverboard with ROS Robotics, um, whether you're using a laptop and an FTDI, or you want to use a, you know, a Raspberry Pi and use the UR and send serial commands um, with robot operating system that we use for autonomous mapping and navigation. And then yet another video in this series is going to show you how to set up the hoverboard uh, motors and the controller so it responds to a joystick that you can plug in or a pair of potentiometers. And that's pretty great. You may have seen a video of somebody driving, uh, driving around on a lazy boy on the street. And I'm not for sure if this is what they would have used, but it is one great option. And it's something that you can add to a Ross robot. Occasionally it's helpful to have a joystick just to move your robots around without having to boot up a computer or some such a thing. So here's one of two typical hoverboards that I've already taken apart and mostly put back together for your benefit. So you can see one of two common configurations. Okay, just the screwdriver, you can take these shells off. Uh, on this side, you'll see a power button. This is a single pull, single throw switch. It goes to the control board. And on the other side, we have the charging port. And although a lot of control boards have a, um, have a connector for the charging port, both hoverboards I've taken apart have the charger going actually to the main power bus, these XT60 connected wires. Um, uh, so what you see in this configuration is two halves. You have a nice sturdy frame that you can actually bolt things directly to with M4 screws. And just using some standoffs and some aluminum angle iron, I was able to make a sturdy frame for my robot just by bolting right into these. Now, to give my robot a narrower wheelbase, I just took a saw and I chopped out this uh, four inches or so uh, where the pivot is because I didn't need that feature for my robot. And so I was able to squeeze this frame a little bit closer together. So also inside, uh, you'll see the battery pack um, right here. And it's usually under a little frame to hold it together, but I have that already removed. And it just gets attached to both uh, one or two control boards with this connector thing and onto the charging port. So let me get this stuff out of the way and talk about important stuff. By the way, typically on hoverboards, this is a um, 36 volt battery at 4 amp hours or 4.4 amp hours. Um, and I haven't tested that. My, I bought these hoverboards used for about 50 bucks for a pair. So that was a pretty great deal, and I didn't expect to get good batteries. Um, my robot uses a 36 volt, 10 amp hour battery, and uh, with running a Raspberry Pi, it lasts all day. So that's pretty great. There are two possibilities you'll see for control boards. In one case, you're going to have a board on each side. Um, and if you just have one board on each side and no other board in the middle, 
on the opposite side where the battery is. Uh, if the battery was here, you would have a control board in this shape would be here. All right, this is the control board we really want to use. Now, these split control boards, um, some people have uh, hacked the firmware for them, but in uh, three hoverboards, um, they all have different sideboards. Um, these are called uh, split sideboard controller boards. Um, so because they all look different, um, I haven't taken the time to try to map out and see which version of firmware that claims to have hacked the sideboard uh, is actually going to work for them. I haven't bothered. I was able to acquire one of these for free and then another two at just 30 bucks each. And it's worth every single penny to uh, just control both boards with one serial port and one board. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. So if you have this version, you're still going to have a couple of boards uh, roughly in this location. It's sometimes embedded in the plastic. They're going to be a little bit smaller. And these have accelerometers in them, so the board knows when it's tilting. And that's a feature that I'm not going to use. You could actually still use this accelerometer. Um, I have some from other things that are much smaller and, and just, I think, uh, easier to use. Now these wheels, these hub motors, are what really makes the magic happen with the hoverboards. These are outstanding. They are strong, uh, they are precise, uh, and there's no messing with gearboxes uh, and chains and pulleys and stuff like that. All you have to do is mount this single shaft on anything you want and it's ready to go. Make your electrical connections uh, to a programmed hover, uh, hoverboard controller or uh, you can purchase uh, separately uh, an electronic speed controller but I don't like that option. Um, regardless of the size wheel, they all seem to have the same shaft. So you can drill about a 5 8 inch hole in a block of aluminum and split it and clamp this thing and then use a couple of set screws to make sure it doesn't spin. Or, let me bring this back into view. Notice this wonderful block that came with the hoverboard frame. And that's what I love. Even if you don't want to use the entire hoverboard frame, uh, this is just four screws, and it's a great mounting block. So you could chop the aluminum here, and it's aluminum, so it cuts fairly easily with a sawzall. You can cut out just the block. Uh, I would recommend probably cutting out at least this section here, and then you have four uh, mounting points in addition. But there's all sorts of things you could do, especially uh, if you're pretty handy with machining. With machining things, you could replace these with longer bolts and attach this just this square to a block of aluminum and that would work pretty great. And that does it for part one, just a general overview of the hardware of a hoverboard and some things you can do with it. In part two we're going to get into a lot more details about the control board itself, where to get firmware, and how to write the firmware to the board. In parts three and four we're going to get into details about customizing that firmware for your specific needs, for your specific applications, whether it's a ROS robot that you want to control with serial commands, or you want to operate the hoverboard motors with a joystick for some other invention. I really, really hope the information in this series adds to your robotics toolkit as much as it has to mine. I'm just overjoyed and having a blast, and I hope you will too. I'm Lloyd Brombach, author of Practical Robotics in C++, and we'll see you back for part two.